Hi guys, Sis Babette here. We're gonna be talking about the number one cause of diarrhea or scouring in your young bottle fed lambs, goats, and even alpaca. Talk to you soon. Hi everyone, Dr. Sis here. So today I want to walk you through something that could save you a ton in vet bills. What I'm referring to is the number one cause of diarrhea in young bottle fed animals, and it's simply dietary diarrhea. And this basically means that they have diarrhea simply because they're being fed inappropriately. And we're gonna run through some of the most common mistakes, how to correct them, and how to know if it's something more that does definitely need a vet visit and some extra treatment on top of it. So every spring I'm inundated for about 10 weeks with young kids and lambs being bottle fed by loving, well-meaning owners who have diarrhea. The lambs, not the owners. <laughs> and in my experience, and I believe the literature supports me in this, I would say that about 80% of those are just due to inappropriate feeding, usually too much, just pure overfeeding. The story is usually the same. They'll say that the lamb or the goat kid doesn't seem concerned or unhappy at all, behavior is normal, appetite's normal, he just always has this runny scowl or this dirty backside, and it seems to be worse in the morning. Now worse in the morning is common because people are often feeding three times a day before work, and then an evening feed and another big feed just before going to sleep, so they're getting a big hit in the evening. Now it's important to note here that if your little one is dull or lethargic, losing his appetite or seems painful in the abdomen, so that would look like a hunched back, for example, kicking up under the belly, teeth grinding, that's a pain behavior, these are all signs that there is something more going on, okay? So if you see any of those, he does need to see a vet. The risk is too high if there's something truly wrong, so please see a vet then. But if he is really happy and bright and, and drinking well and literally seems like any other healthy little lamb or kid other than a mild scour around the backside, then you may be able to correct it just by adjusting some of the following things. Let's jump straight to breaking down the common mistakes here and how to correct them. Number one, so without a doubt, the number one issue I see is simply overfeeding. People tend to follow the back of the milk powder packets, which are fine if your lamb is a healthy singleton born about 5kg at birth, but I would say that 1% of the lambs and kids I see fit into this category, hardly any. They're usually being hand read because they were the smallest of a triplet, fostered off mum so she can focus on her remaining two, or a little one that was weak and straight off the bat needed help, possibly premature, so again likely to be little. Now the reality is we get them born anywhere from one to six kg, sometimes even smaller. The smallest lamb I have treated was this little guy who weighed in at just under 700 grams. That's about the size of a guinea pig. So my point is we need to work out how much they should be drinking based on the individual, and here is how you do that. 10 to 15% of their body weight across a 24 hour period in liters. So if you are feeding a two and a half kg lamb, he's going to need 375 ml across a 24 hour period at 15%, so that's maximum. Now if you're feeding six feeds a day, that equals 62 ml each feed. Of course they're growing, so reweigh and adjust every few days, please, at least once a week, reweigh them. Frequency is another issue. Now naturally a bub would drink just a few mil every hour or two. There's actually some studies that have been done that show at six to seven weeks old, which is when we, we tend to be dropping them down and feeds and weaning them, naturally they're still drinking sort of 14, 15 times a day. And initially in that first week or two, even up to sort of 37 times across 24 hour period is, is what they would naturally be drinking if they were still from mum. So putting that in perspective, you can see how giving our three or four big feeds a day can pose real issues. So the more you can feed multiple small feeds, the safer. Check out my other video on abermace or bloat to learn more about those risks, jump over there. So quantity and frequency. The next biggest issue I see causing dietary scour is what we call milk ruminitis. You have to understand a little bit about anatomy here. So baby ruminants, calves, lambs, goats, little alpaca to an extent, have a valve-like structure down at the bottom of the esophagus, so before it goes into the stomach, which diverts milk to either the abomasum, where milk should go, or to the rumen, where hard food and grain should go, and even water. When a bub drinks warm liquid, the body goes, ah, that feels like milk, especially if he's suckling, the body goes, ah, that feels like milk, and it diverts it down to the abomasum, where it should be. When he chews or drinks cold water, it goes, oh, that's grown-up food, let's divert that down to the rumen, the grown-up chamber. Now, the rumen cannot do anything with milk. Milk shouldn't be in there. The rumen is a big fermentation chamber for grass. So when we feed milk that is too cold, or when they drink really, really quickly, milk can accidentally spill over into the rumen. Okay, if that little groove doesn't work, it's gonna spill into the rumen accidentally. 
Here it sits, it goes rank and it causes belly upsets, diarrhea, and a mild grumbling, ongoing kind of mild bloated look. They're really uncomfortable, they're unhappy, they just feel sick. So you wanna check that the milk is warm. It should ideally be 30 degrees, it can drop down to about 20 degrees when they're a little bit older, so as long as they're strong and drinking well with no issues. If you're feeding yogurtized milk to prevent abomace or bloat, as a side note, this is fed cold, okay? Hold your bottle upside down. Milk should drip from the teat. If you hold it on a 45 degree angle, we should get drip, drip, drip. If it's coming out in a steady stream, it's coming out too fast, get a new teat, try again. We don't want that coming out without them having to suckle because that strong suck reflex is what activates that little groove to go, oh, that's baby food, let's put it down to the abomasum, okay? So our next cause of dietary diarrhea, third is going to make sure you're making up feeds fresh. Now I know this is a bit more labor intensive, but milk is high protein and proteins are fragile. Chilling isn't the issue here, but when we reheat it, those proteins denature and they break apart, changing the nutritional composition of the milk. Unless you're literally warming it in a water bath in the sink, which a lot of people do, especially if they've had babies before, they know what they're up to. So that's fine, but just make sure that we're not microwaving it, you know, or using boiling water and then letting it cool down. Now on that note, number four, is making sure you have your quantities of milk powder to water correct when you're mixing it up. If it's too concentrated or if it's too dilute, that can cause havoc in the gut as well. So make sure you're following the back of the packet closely, measure it out properly, no guesstimates. And five, last but not least, is hygiene. Just like a human baby, the teats and the bottles need to be disinfected between feeds, otherwise you're just growing nasty bacteria. Okay. So that's the checklist. Now, as in every video, I would always recommend getting a vet visit to make sure we're ruling out anything more sinister. These little ones go downhill really quickly, so it's always better to be safe than sorry. However, if your lamb or goat is otherwise completely well, has a great appetite, then you can try these things first to rule out anything simple. If it is just dietary, you will see an improvement within 24 to 36 hours. So if it's not looking any better at that point, get him to see the vet, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much for checking in. Fingers crossed for a happy and healthy lambing, kidding season for you. And uh, I will check in next time. Please don't forget to jump over to the YouTube channel and subscribe, support me there. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. Okay, bye-bye.